Hi everyone welcome back to another Reddit cheating story. Before we start please hit the subscribe button and notification bell if you love to watch more cheating stories. Do the second chance ever work out? I'm not asking for myself. I see so many people on here taking their significant other back after affairs. I truly wonder if there are any real success stories out there. Also the amount of people who cheat these days, makes me so sick. How do good people just lose all their humanity? Cheating changes you, I've witnessed what it does secondhand. Edit. I didn't make myself clear enough. I've been cheated on by my boyfriend of 13 years. I am in no way considering any type of reconciliation. He cheated on me then lied about it for years. He knows that the damage is in no way repairable. That man has broken himself just as much as he has our family. He's a great father. He still helps me co-parent our two daughters. But every time I see him, I see the hurt he's caused himself. He's paying for his own mistakes heavily. Our kids have lost all respect for him. He was best friends with our youngest. She is so hurt by his actions and she just shuns him now. He came clean and admitted all his faults but is just going through the motions. I'm pretty sure he's drinking himself into a stupor every evening to cope. And he told me when all this came out that he is a piece of shit his words. Said you were so good to me and I had everything. Look what I did with it. Threw it all away and for what? Do you think I seriously deserve any of you? I have screamed and yelled and cursed him for what he's done. All he did was stand there and cry and take because it's all true. But then I realized that he's felt inadequate his entire life. From being adopted and never knowing his real parents. To being poor his entire childhood. To working his way to the top and finally learning what self-stability is. When we met, I was a single mom who was independent and didn't need anyone to take care of me. I had my own small business, my own place to live. But I was lonely for companionship. I was also scared to put myself out there because I had a two-year-old daughter who required most my time. So I agreed to meet this guy my brother-in-law kept talking about. He was like hey my boss is a great guy and I want my little sister to have the best. So I reluctantly agreed to meet him at their place. To say that it was awkward is putting it nicely. We were both nervous and couldn't relax enough to converse normally. But he left me a note under my cell phone and asked if we could try getting to know each other via texting. This was the start of a beautiful friendship that turned into a wonderful relationship. But he basically admitted around the three-month mark that he was so lucky because we were too good for him. He fell head over heels in love with my daughter. And she just adored him. He had to navigate all the hate that my ex-husband threw us. He became paranoid that I would go back to my ex-husband. I have no idea where that came from either. We had been separated for a year when we met and divorced for three months. I seriously hated the guy because he was a terrible person. And I kept his name off the birth certificate for this reason. I gave him chance after chance to be a good dad but parenting just isn't for some people. He was using my daughter to spy on me. Telling her that mom's new boyfriend isn't your dad. I finally went no contact with him after seeing the stress he kept putting on his child. It was the best decision I ever made for her. But it took a toll on my boyfriend's insecurities. Things started to get better. After three months we finally decided to move in together. He was upset because he would be moving into my place instead of his. Mine was bigger and my little girl was happy in our home. It wasn't that he didn't like my place. It was more about how he wanted better for all of us and he felt like it was settling. He tried to spoil me constantly with expensive gifts. I finally sat him down and was like we got to talk. You are trying to overcompensate for fears that aren't even rational. I got the well you clearly don't need me. So I am just trying to impress you to keep you happy. I should have dealt with it right then and there. I should have seen that this man is broken and needs help to recognize his personal value. I chalked it up to the moving in together jitters. His job was demanding a lot of his time. He just had lots of stress. I told hey you make me happy. You are my somebody and that should be enough for you. We were clearly head over heels in love with each other. Then the most amazing thing happened. I became pregnant with baby girl number two. And he was on top of the world. Things were so crazy and wonderful. But his job was killing us. He started getting scared that he wouldn't be around enough to help with our new baby. So we made the decision to expand my small business to make it profitable enough for two incomes. He quit his job and we started working together. Then everything kind of started falling apart for us financially. One of our contacts got dropped because the company went belly up. We lost our house and had to move into a two-bedroom shack above my parents' house. 
baby number two came and we were so cramped. He felt like such a complete failure because we suffocating in a tiny shack. But we were happy. Our kids were provided for and thriving. But he just felt so much guilt. Then I got postpartum depression and things got worse. I was in a shell for seven months. He kept begging me for physical and emotional attention, and I just couldn't give it. It was a chore just to get out of bed every day. So he suffered heavily from being so very lonely. When I finally started to get my hormones in check, he was just so devastated from the lack of attention that he wasn't himself anymore. But we still tried to make things better. We ended up landing new contracts for our business. We started to climb out of our financial hole. We finally got a new place to live. But our sex life was non-existing. He was suffering from Ed and it was only getting worse. He started loosing his hair. All this stress was taking its toll on him. And he was blaming himself for all the trials we ended. Not good enough was what he kept telling himself. He finally got diagnosed with low T and started doing injections to get his drive back. It worked sort of. He felt better but started turning his attention away from his family. I spent the next several years trying my best to bring him back. No matter how hard I fought to show him that I loved him, he just seemed uninterested in our relationship. So I started noticing him spending more time on his phone. He seemed happy for once. I caught him taking pictures of himself randomly. I was feeling very uneasy about everything. So I confronted him about it. And he lied to me about it for two years. Made me feel paranoid and apologized for doubting him. He didn't just sleep with another woman, he fell in love with her. Then she broke his heart. That's when all this came to a nasty head. He broke his own life because he convinced himself it was never really his to begin with. He was such a great man and father. Now he's just a broken shell. I don't want him back. He hurt me more than anyone ever has. I miss that man that stole my heart so many years ago. I will never forget him. I feel privileged to have gotten that time with him. But he let this monster take over his life. He let him lie to me. He was slowly killing me and was okay with it. So I know that man is gone. That's what hurts so bad. I'm trying to navigate through all this pain and still function for my daughters. I'm still trying to figure out what I am going to do. We own a business together that requires us to work together every day. I won't put him out of a job. His dad lives with us and requires us for financial support. So I'm currently looking for a smaller house for me and our girls to move to. He can stay here and take care of his dad. I don't mind seeing him at work. That's about as far as I've gotten. Here are some of the best comments from our community. In my case, I wholeheartedly regret giving a second chance. It's rare. It also depends on what you mean by workout. Some marriages survive. I don't think I have ever read a story about her where I wished I was in that marriage. To each their own, that's a shame that many BS think they are working toward repairing the old marriage, when that marriage is dead. If that is your expectations I think you are going to be disappointing every time. Yes. In my case it has worked out. He's done all the work. H has done everything I've asked him to and some things I didn't. Our old M died three years ago and we started over building our new M from the ground up making a better foundation. In our case, so far, it's worked out. I'm still healing and he's doing everything he can to help me. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell.